Welcome to the channel if it's your first time here and welcome back if it's not. Now in today's Fix It Friday, which is sponsored by AliExpress, we're going to be looking at this. And this is a Sega Master System. Now I have never owned one of these. I don't think I've ever seen one of these in the flesh. And I picked this up from eBay. I think it was around about 20 pounds and it was sold to me as faulty with no power. And I guess that's easily tested because uh, I have some power here. I can plug it in. And because this is different from the Master System 2, it actually has a power LED there. So if I press this power button, this LED should light up, but I've got a feeling that it won't. No, didn't. So yeah, it is as I purchased a Master System with no power. What could that be? Well, it's a bit difficult to say, but a few ideas could be, it might have a faulty power jack, but we don't have any flickering when I wiggle the jack around, so might not be that. It could be a faulty voltage regulator. That is a sort of distinct possibility. I've seen those fail a lot on these before on videos that I've watched. It could be a faulty LED. It could actually be powering up just fine and uh, there's just no LED working. We won't rule that one out either because that happened to me recently in a video about my Mega Drive. Or it could be a faulty power switch or it could be just a component inside shorting out and stopping this from booting up. So we could do some more testing on this. We need to crack this open. So let's get out the grey mat and do that. Okay, so to get into a Sega Master System, we need to flip it over and then we have to remove these six Phillips screws. interesting it's got like these kind of slots on here like it was meant to slot on top of something and there's an expansion port cover on there can't think of anything that this would slot into anyway let's pull the top off yeah so apart from a bit of dust and a bit of schmoo it's actually all right in here it looks okay but I think to make testing a little bit easier, I think we need to get it out of the case fully. And to do that, we need to remove these 12 screws. So while I'm unscrewing these screws, let's shout out our channel members. Channel members have gone one step above subscribing to the channel and help support it with a small monthly donation. If you want to become a channel member, then either scan the QR code in the corner of the screen or follow the link in the description. So anyway, our channel members at Time Editing are the Kip fans who are Matt Lovies, JLC Electrical, For The Burbs, Wayne Cornish, Scott Made A Thing, Draco MacGyver, Rebecca, Giggsy, AT, Christiane, Francesco Demare, Music Me and Tido. Then we have the Kip Early Birds who are Tim Salt, Sorcerer Stan, Mark C and Rob Lynn and I love these people so much they are the Kip lovers and they are Bella Webster, Stess Six Fix, Lawrence, Scott Kendall, Pross Retrofix, Costa Chelsea, DD Media Production, Lee Benz, Anna David Hughes, Danielle Adele, James and Danny and Alex Bennett. Then I've got the nuttiest people there are here. They are the Kip Nutters and they are Becky Becky Boobar and Alan Green. And then boom, right at the top there, we've got our Kip Mental. They are RJ Prate and I really do appreciate you. That is so awesome that you're a Kip Mental member. So yeah, big love to all my channel members no matter what level you're at. And I think we're about into this master system now. Yeah, around the back of the board doesn't look too horrendous. There's some bits of factory flux, but on the whole, it looks okay. Hmm, interesting. There's a bit of schmoo by the voltage regulator there. So the way the master system power works is in the back there comes the nine volts and it goes into the voltage regulator and it's knocked down to five volts. So the voltage regulator turns it into five volts. It does create a lot of heat and that's why the voltage regulator is mounted on this heat sink here. And I'm wondering if the voltage regulator is an issue. So we can establish that pretty easily with the multimeter. 
Right, so I think we should see what our voltage is doing. So if we plug in the power supply, we should at this point here have nine volts-ish. We do, excellent. And if we turn the console on, now if we look at the voltage regulator here, the top pin should have our nine volts going into it, and then the bottom pin should have our five volts going out of it. And our middle pin here is directly to the ground. So if we put our negative probe onto the ground and we go to our top pin, we should get nine volts, and we do. Now, if we go to the bottom pin, we should get five volts. We do not. I think our voltage regulator's shot. Okay, what we'll do now is we'll switch to the microscope so we can see our voltage regulator and I can show you how to change it in a little bit more detail. So it's a little bit hard to see, but this is a 7A05 voltage regulator and they are pretty common. So I ordered myself some from AliExpress. I got a bag of them for a couple of quid. I always have them spare because they're used on so many consoles and they do fail. So it needs replacing. So I've got the solder sucker heating up. I might just try wicking the solder away with the soldering iron, but uh, before we do anything, we need to unscrew this screw that's holding it to the heatsink. Right. Oh yeah, wow. I have a feeling that it got quite hot there. Okay, well sometimes when old solder gets heated, it gets a bit sort of funny and manky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some fresh new solder onto it, just to make cleaning it up a little bit easier, hopefully. Okay, let's try wicking some away with some solder wick and see what happens. Oh, that worked pretty well. Whoa, good wicking action. I'm impressed. All right, let's give this area a little clean. Now the new voltage regulator will go through the board, but we need to put some thermal paste on it first to help dissipate the heat. And that is the imperfect amount of thermal paste. So if we slide this in the board. We have to get it so the screw hole lines up and we squish it down. And then we can switch back to the microscope and solder this in position and we know it's going to be exactly where it needs to be. So let's go back to the microscope and solder this in position. So I'm just going to put some flux on. You've got this far in the video, maybe tell me I've fluxed it up in the comments. I know lots of you like saying that. Awesome. All done. Okay, so there is our new voltage regulator on the side. Yeah. 
soldered on pretty nicely there, giving the board a little air blast. So I guess it's ready to go back together to test. I've got a feeling that this is going to be okay, but you never know. We'll get it back together and we can test it. So let's use some YouTube magic and get it back together. There we go, all back together. But does it work? Let's just try the power first of all, hopefully. Yes, excellent. Well, that's a good start. So the power definitely works, but does the rest of the console work? Don't know. Um, let me just set up my little monitor. I'll find a game and we can give it a quick test. Right, okay, so I've got my trusty Master System EverDrive cartridge that I got from AliExpress. I think it cost me about 25 pounds. And if you've not seen an EverDrive before on this channel, then essentially it allows you to play backed up copies of all your legally owned games. And also you can put test ROMs onto here and uh, it helps you test a console out better. Let's see what it does. Oh, boom. <laughs> oh, I've not set up a full capture because it felt unnecessary, but let's just get Sonic to play. Oh, let's get Sonic the Hedgehog 2 to play. There we go. Yep, all good. Wow, there we go, that was so cool. I'm really happy with that. A really cheap and easy fix. And now I've got a nice, fully working Sega Master System 1. Now I don't need to RGB mod this one because it's already got an RGB out, which is amazing. But I could maybe do a region mod on this, perhaps? Or the extended sound mod from uh, Consoles Unleashed. That could be an option. But what a nice little fix. And I love the kind of fixes that I can do that I can share with you that you should be able to do at home. So if you found this video from just looking around on YouTube and you don't subscribe to my channel, maybe please consider subscribing. It would really be helpful. I wanna to get to 30,000 subscribers and it would be great to have you here with me on the journey. And you know, never know. You might see this pop up in future videos if I do some little modifications to it. Good, right, excellent. That has made me very happy. And I hope it's made you happy too. But I don't think I've got anything else to say, so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but for now, it's game over.